So sit back, relax, and enjoy some Scooby-Doo. All right, I think we're good to go. What's up, everybody? My name is Jaxler, and this is Scooby-Doo, Night of 100 Frights Any Percent. Uh, I've got a bunch of buddies on, uh, with me on the mic, if you want to go ahead and introduce introduce yourselves, like, if I can speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, what's up, guys? Uh, my name's uh, Nastani, and yeah, I'm just uh, happy to be here. Uh, Jax is the current world, world record holder for the uh, category, and hopefully we just uh, have a good time here. Hey, I'm Sam. I won this game too. And oh my god, we have such a good one to show you. Like, we've been popping up words left and right for the past few days. Yeah. So, this should be good. Hi, I'm Snowy Moogle, and I'm just like super happy to just help show off this game. If you, if you have never seen this game before, it is an absolutely amazing run. And y'all are in it for a good time. All right, so before we start the run, I'd just like to mention a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we're going to be playing this on the GameCube version of the game. We'll explain why that's the case roughly about uh, like 15 minutes into the run when it becomes relevant. Uh, additionally, um, I'm going at the very start of the run, I'm going to be quiet just for a second so I can listen to an audio cue to know when to skip the first cutscene. Uh, but then from there, we'll be good to go. Uh, this run gets off to a pretty fast start. Uh, there's going to be a lot of talking going on, so I apologize in advance. This game is really, really technical. So I think without further ado, we're ready to go. So I'll count from three and we'll start time on go. Okay? Three, two, one, go. All right. So wait for about the seven second mark for the sounds. All right, and we're off. So first things first, you're gonna see me collecting a bunch of Scooby Snacks here. These are the game's primary collectible. Uh, there's like a bajillion of them scattered throughout this game and they are used to pay for snack toll booth gates that are kind of placed at the end of certain levels as sort of a uh, way to force players to uh, look around and explore. This game is essentially like a 3D Metroidvania type game. So as a result, they try to encourage that exploration. We're gonna be skipping a lot of those uh, toll booth gates throughout the run. However, we have to go out of our way to places such as this level in order to get some extra snacks for later. Um, you're also going to be seeing me do some uh, charge attack movement, but there's a bit of stuff going on with that that's kind of complicated and a little hard to explain. Um, so, uh, managed to not drop any snacks here, so that's pretty good. Uh, out with a 57, not too bad of a start. Um, I'm going to let uh, Snowy kind of talk about the manor segment coming up here. Okay, so right here, you're actually going to see Jax. He was talking about the snack gates that we have to pay. He's going to pay the first one right here, just a quick 25 snack gate, but they will cost a lot more later on. And additionally, what Jax was talking about, we're going to be going out of our way a lot in levels. So our paths through the levels aren't necessarily the absolute fastest, but a combination of going fast and getting a lot of the fast snacks. And right here, you're going to see Jax do what's called Chandelier Jump. And you're normally not intent to get on that chandelier right away, but with a precise jump, he can do it. In addition, he's going to be jumping off some invisible ledges on these canvases, giving him access to a bunch more snacks right here. That is a very clean Yeah, it's like a 41. That's pretty good. All right. So the whole reason that we went inside there was to go talk to Holly. She gives us a map that we can go use to uh, use these work gates that you'll see later, um, as well as it's required to get that shovel so we can go into the first major wing of the game, Smuggler's Cove. Uh, in this game, there's kind of like three major like areas of the map. There's uh, Smuggler's Cove, that manor you saw, and some hedge maze areas that you'll see later. Um, we're going to be going through to Smuggler's Cove because at the start of the run, we need the first major Metroidvania upgrade the double jump. Now, uh, this level level is kind of like the start of a bunch of like cycle based uh, components to levels so there's going to be some enemies moving around here. I tried to time my charges effectively so I could grab those two snacks right there and get a charge off right here and be in a good enough position. So those rats and those uh, flying fish monsters start in the same position when you load the level and move consistently uh, from then on. So as a result if you go fast enough you can make the same cycle every time. Uh, does someone want to talk about rubber band skip? 
So, um, in this level, or in this game, you have to save, save Shaggy a number of times. However, because this is a speed run, we don't do that. So, we're going to skip saving Shaggy here. Um, so, what Jax is going to do, he's going to collect all these snacks, and he's going to charge into that corner and jump on the box, and the game cooperates. There we go. So, that, is, that skips having to put Shaggy on that life preserver and swing off his legs onto the box. And um, we don't say Shaggy at any point in this room. It's funny because it's supposed to be a main component of the levels. We'll encounter him three times. We don't say them any of them. Yeah. You're good. We don't need you here. Uh, so this is a relatively straightforward bit here uh, through the tier two. This is just kind of a connected level that you're normally supposed to like come through again later as well. And there's a lot more to this level, but I'm going to try to go for something here called Tar Strats. Let's see if I can hit it. Pause champ. Oh, I got the early frame. Let's go, dude. <laughs> So they're, they're, what happened there is uh, normally the sticky tar prevents you from running fast as well as jumping, but upon loading into the level, there's a two frame window in which you can input a jump and reach that barrel to get a free snack box. So uh, the consequences of me doing that aren't going to be super apparent until much later on, but hitting that in a marathon and uh, hitting the first frame actually gives you less height too. So that was insane. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, so recently, recently go ahead. we implemented a metronome for that strat, so it was easier to time. Um, because the tar is very slow, as you can tell, like Scooby's movement speed is really slowed down by it, and you can't even run or jump. So skipping the tar does save a lot of seconds. Yeah. Yeah, and even if you like miss that like don't jump, like even if you just get over there. You still save time because you, you you're not slowed down by the tar. And essentially here we're gonna be uh, he's gonna collect some and he's gonna jump up against the key to get to the door and then we're gonna go into hedge. Now there's four levels to hedge, but we're only gonna go through uh, three of them. Here comes Hedge 2, though. Hedge 2 is the most interesting part of the match. This is uh, a lot of the things. Uh, he's about to jump on Yeet Cycle, which is basically just him trying to jump on the reverse of the ledge on this wall. He did not get it, unfortunately. But, uh, it's a super fun. inconsistent jump. Yeah, it's, it's not consistent at all. But he, uh, right now, we're about to see him go uh, into the match. <laughs> Your first try? First try, let's go. Yeah, that's, a, that's a really hard, hard jump to make, but uh, once you get a piece of it, it's like very nice. And you save uh, a bit more from the other strat, which is just jumping at flower and jumping. Yeah, one. you're not supposed to be in this area until you get the first boss's Metroidvania upgrade with Roshes. Um, but by doing that jump there, or an alternative strat right over here called Flower Jump, you can actually get those snacks for free. And again, like Snowy said, it seems like we're kind of going out of our way through those little sus. Um, but like these snacks are going to be super necessary for later. You have a lot of like snack gates to pay that are like 400, like, and like 850, and another snack gate that I'm going to And essentially, you're going to see him just like take up some snacks here and just pretty much collect as much snacks as possible. And the reason that we collect all of these snacks here is because they're all like very close together, meaning that it's just fast to pick them up, right? And right now, you're going to see the first, uh, Major like uh, clip, uh, clip of the game where he's gonna try to uh, clip frame the game and, uh, and like, skip uh, all of hedge for. It's like a 720. That's pretty good. <laughs> so what Jack skipped there was a, uh, was a like a really long auto scroller with Shaggy, another Shaggy skip, and um, and he also skipped um, the first two Chills and Spills levels and Greenhouse levels. Um, not only does that 
just going through these levels save on snacks because there's snack gates there but it also saves you going through five levels when you go through three here yeah and like like sam said the auto scroller is like super duper slow there's like ways to speed it up but it's like it's really sad so yeah, it's funny <laughs> we're doing this the level he was just in uh misbehaving part one is like not a play if you're playing this game casually you don't get there until at least like an hour or two in uh, but we do this big skip just because it just so happens going through these levels skull cliff backwards happens to be faster than the casual route yeah. so we're actually getting to like where exactly you'd want to be in a casual route like in the next couple minutes exactly so right here I do another slope jump to get up to these snacks, and then if I go fast enough here, I should pretty uh, consistently make this platform right here. That saves about roughly 15 seconds or so. Um, so now we're chilling here, grab a couple of snacks, and my work isn't over yet. I'm trying to make a really tight cycle at the end of the run here, or the, the uh, well, the stretch of level, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I wish. Um, <laughs> there's a, a falling platform that I'm trying to meet at the end that will let me skip a little bit of a run around at the end of the level here, which kind of makes it hard to pass through otherwise. Something you'll also notice here is that I'm making what looks like a lot of leaps of faith. The game's camera angles as in all the quiz levels kind of assume that you're coming from the opposite direction since we're technically going for Okay, grab the game. Uh, so as a result, like, you have to practice a lot here because if you don't know where you're going, uh, you'll just pretty much all the time fall to your death. It's pretty rough. So got through here a little bit slow, but we still need the cycle, so that's fine. Oh, it's worth pointing out that this game doesn't have a free camera, but the camera is fixed, and, and that makes it difficult to go through the levels not in their intended way, like here. It, um, like you have to be, you have to know when the platform's coming because otherwise you could just easily just jump into the void. Exactly. So I went for a bit of uh, baby strats right there. There's a bit more of a difficult route you can do right there, but if you miss it, you get to, it costs like ten seconds to death. You have to it um, to make up for it. So I decided not to go for it, um, but. And death works mainly just dying. Yeah. Or wherever. The and that resets the cycle. For some levels, you don't uh, die. Like, if you die, you don't jump all the way back to the end. Like, in uh, the previous level, you're still there. And you die, you don't go all the way back to the end of that level, right? You don't go halfway. So, you have some forgiving spots, but most of the time, if you die, you can use it. You're barely making the cycle at the end yeah. of the skull, too. Uh, That's a very tight cycle. This next level, though, why I try to set up for it. I'll go for ladder. Because, uh, this flex is going to do uh, some really here, which is just skipping, having to wait for the platform to come back by using that invisible collision on that wall. And then he's going to go, then he's going to climb up the level using planks. I should and probably delete that gold. The level with the helmet. He also skips a cutscene there. Yeah. So right so, there, I actually did a bit of a manette where I actually jumped in a very specific way to make that zombie like super spooked, like holy crap, Scooby jumped. And that causes him to like not move as soon, which allows me to scoot right by without actually taking the damage. That allows me to set up a charge around the rock so that I can avoid taking a hit to the head. And then we're good to go here. Um, so yeah, at the top of this hill is the next Metroidvania upgrade. That's the whole reason we came all the way out here in the first place was to get this helmet so we can hit buttons, deal damage to enemies. It's necessary in order to beat the game. Uh, but then after this, I'm going to take a death warp uh, to put ourselves close to the warp gate to exit this level. And then I'm going to let Snowy take over because we're going into a very, very long stretch of difficult levels. Uh, if you didn't think this was already tricky enough. Uh, uh, so actually, if you play... So, oh, oh. <laughs> so uh, Scooby does an animation after getting a, a power-up. But uh, normally after you get the helmet, you're supposed to go through the manor. It's a super long section of the game to get a power up to get into fishy clues the next like section after that. Uh, but it turns out the invisible wall they put to block you off of fishy clues is just low enough that you can jump over it. And that's about a third of the game just skipped right there. And fishy clues, fishy one is actually like one of the hardest like individual levels in the entire run. He's conveyor belts. <laughs> These conveyor belts are really hard to control Scooby on, and they take a lot of practice. Again, what Nastani was talking about earlier, uh, conserving Scooby's momentum by doing very precise jumps on these platforms that are, like, moving Scooby around. There's a lot of that. There's trying to get as many snacks as possible, and that was actually an amazing... That was a sub 40. That's really good. <laughs> 
and now uh fishy 2 is one of my favorite levels in the game because it theory essentially it is an auto scroller but at the same time because the cycles are pretty generous jacks will basically like his time through this level individual will be almost the same every time but he has to be very fast here because he wants to get as many snacks as possible because when you miss snacks in the run it means you'll have to get slower snacks later on so, Fishy 2 is interesting where it's a level you're never going to directly lose or save time on, but maybe depending on how many, like, extra or extra snacks you get or extra snacks you lose, you might save or lose time later on. And so it's really, so you see, like, yeah, there's a platform, he could have uh, gotten the, uh, an extra snack there on the platform on the right. But yeah, it's not a huge just deal. A tad by hitting the crab, so it's little things like that that cause you to lose time loss throughout the run, even though you won't see it on the block or say if you're looking at the splits right now. Yeah. Yeah. There, it's like, if you don't lose any time per se, because you still have a cycle on this platform going up, but you didn't lose out on the snack, right? That's a, a common thing with these levels that you might not lose on time because they are kind of hard to score, but you will drop it all the time. You're going to be behind on this map. So, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so I know Jax has like in mind the snacks he does want to get throughout the run, but if he is missing snacks, he will be like checking his snack total at certain points in the run to see uh, which snacks, like if he's down some snacks, what potential slower snacks he might have to get later on, or maybe he's uh, very ahead on snacks, which he actually is right now. He has a very good snack yeah, total. Even with doing like the the worst route in uh, history, which is kind of insane. So he could, like, potentially skip some of these slower snacks later on. And that kind of type of knowledge, knowing which snacks are slower and faster, is something that's really fun with this game. Just the snack routing in general, knowing which snacks are slower and faster and how good your snack collecting is, and like, the on-the-fly routing is just such an interesting part of running this game. Yeah, so right there, I'm kind of looking at my snack count. I, I was at uh, uh, 1,015, which is basically perfect. So if I play my cards right and don't miss too many more snacks, we're pretty much good to go, so that's pretty sick. Yeah, um, so this level's already passed, but you may notice that, that Jax got onto that efficient free platform pretty early. Like, if you play the game and you usually have to wait, but if you hold a straight left angle, then you can get to that platform pretty quick, and then you can jump on an invisible barrier separating the two parts of the level, meaning that you don't have to wait for the slow platforms and go around. That saves about 30 seconds if you do it properly, compared to just going through the other way. Yeah, he just did like a little skip there where he just like jumped over the car since like obviously you can't jump on the car so that's why he jumped uh, like, on the walkway itself to get to uh, so no, the coast levels these are actually like some of the hardest and most punishing levels in the entire run yeah. he's gonna be i'm gonna be quiet for a sec for the cutscene skip oh i i had it <laughs> I just barely touched uh, it. That's fine. Cutscene, I barely there's a, it. Yeah, the, the hitbox for triggering the cutscene is a lot higher than you might think. And so you have to do a very precise jump to skip over it. And unfortunately, like, hitting the cutscene is like 10-ish seconds right there. Yeah, and essentially skipping the cutscene, there's two ways to do it. There's the coward way, as I like to call it, where you just run off and die. Um, and then there's the other way where you uh, either jump onto the pole or over the pole, at, like at that intersection. Um, but you may have noticed that he actually fell through the pole and that's a not very fun feature about that pole. Like, you can just sometimes fall through the pole. Yeah, I think that's what happened to me. Things get ruined. And if, if you try to go just like swim over the pole without even jumping on it, uh, you can also just like... Uh, one thing we didn't mention is when Scooby is charging, his hitbox is extremely narrow, and you're gonna see Jax really take advantage of it right here. So Scooby's hitbox is so narrow, he can't get hit. So you're noticing Jax is like scooting by all these enemies right here, and he is not taking any damage, and that's allowing him to make a very tight cycle there. So basically, charge movement in this game is if Scooby's head hits the enemy, it counts as a hit, which will play like a bonk animation, and you don't want that, it's slow. So you basically want to make sure Scooby's head doesn't hit the enemy and you move around them. And it's a really interesting thing with movement, where again, like, uh, you basically can't get hit. So just make sure Scooby doesn't actually attack them and you're good to go. 
Alright, uh, someone wanna explain Coast Bugs? So, what Jax is gonna do is he's gonna get all these snacks, and once he's done that, he's going to take damage from the fish, and he's gonna review Scooby's iframes so he can walk on water and be Scooby Jesus. And then, <laughs> and then he can, and um, um, so then he's gonna get, get these fast snacks here. And, um, and then, uh, because then he's going to be going to go back. But Jax is on 1.1, meaning that there's no invisible fish net here, so he's going to swing on that net instead. And he got it. Good. There, there is certain versions of the game where there is an invisible bag, like out on like the water, which you can jump on, and essentially you just have to pretty much just. Jump on. <laughs> it's only like a, a two second when the is really not. So like, if, if you want to run this game and you pick it up and you don't have the invisible bag, don't worry about it. Clearly, like, Jack doesn't have a bag. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Yes. Yeah, um. So yeah, if you have a game, if, if you want to know which version of the game you have and you have no idea, then going into that level and testing if there's an invisible net there is one of the ways to check if you have 1.0 or not. And in this level, this is the live house, so essentially you can see him like what Snowy was talking about earlier with the air box, where he's going to go up this giant staircase, there's going to be a lot of enemies around him, and essentially he's just going to slide between the every single one, and he's going to be If you if it's very tight, then you can always skip your new snap boxes until you get the power up. Yeah. So the whole reason we went through here was to go get uh, the Super Smash, which we need to go access the final bit of the game. Um, even like there, like we need it in order to deal damage to the final boss. That's kind of the theme of this run: is we get the necessary Metroidvania upgrades to beat the game, and then we just kind of dip, and then we go beat the game. <laughs> Yeah, so we actually do have, yeah, like Jack said, we have everything we need to beat the final boss now, and that's what he's about to go do. Yeah, so this is just kind of cool movement. This is actually kind of a newer route that uh, came into effect a couple, like, a couple of months ago, I'd say. So instead of going around this bend to grab snacks, we're going to be taking this door in a different warp grate to grab some extra snacks. So just a kind of a small little thing. Um, but as we're making our way to the creepy levels, um, Nordic, you probably have time for like one quick message real quick. If you got something. I've got a quick one indeed. Dr. Corporal British sends us $10, says, hey, Jaxler, you just got world record in any percent. Are you not satisfied? No. Good <laughs> Thanks, Brett. I love you, homie. All right. Uh, whoever wants to talk about Creepy One, go ahead. I'll be quiet. All right. So uh, essentially, Creepy One, uh, you're going to see him get a couple of these snack boxes. Because right now, he, he's racing to get And essentially, uh, you're going to see that he just went down to like a little bit of there, and there was a snack box there. And you could either hit the invisible lights there or get hit by the bats flying in the air and then use your eye brain to pick up that box. And essentially, you're going to watch him uh, jump over like part of the bullet a little time today where he don't go all the way around. He just jumps around. And that sort of is actually relatively hard to get because you have to do basically two, two full max points and then also smash to make it back on the ledge. And I don't know, anyone casually would find the, the invisible like snack box. Yeah. In could be one. There is a percentage counter that tells you, but so right here, what I'm doing is these keys over the cauldrons actually have a bigger hitbox than the bubbles that can actually damage you. So as a result, if I abuse Scooby's jump hitbox properly, I can actually just get through there just fine without any issues. All right, here comes the gauntlet. Go ahead, whoever wants to. Uh, so, okay, so what Jax is doing now, he's skipping Shaggy again. He's not going to save him from the jail cell. He's just going to use invisible walls on the on invisible Ooh, walls and then he used another invisible wall trick to to skip the red beard fight because you usually need the gum and then the soap but we don't need that because we're speed running oh and then now he's doing gts so he's so he's skipping skipping the green ghost fight by using invisible walls on there that's good setting the umbrella which you'd usually need to float up here 
So essentially, uh, in the last 30 seconds, Jack skipped both the second and the third boss with just a few invisible ledges. That's why I had to speak like a rat dog. Because, <laughs> oh my god. Because... And essentially, it... those are the two hardest skips in the game. Seen by everyone in the community. Because uh, the third ledge that you see him jump on is uh, highly inconsistent most of the time. And so is Arbia. We actually saw him in the first try and he made second time, which is uh, seen as very good. And now he has 850 snacks, which is the amount that he needs to do this final snack gate. And right now he's going to do something called Lido Skip, which is there's two Lido ledges that you can jump on. And uh, then he jumps on the, uh, like the wall and then he like, gets up to the bridge fast instead of having to, like, you know, do the whole, like, uh, like shut off the, like, What's it called? The slime or whatever? Scooby, yeah. This shark has a bigger so here, um, we're going to skip saving Shaggy from the shark because saving Shaggy is always slow. Right so legs. what Ow. Jax is going to do, he's going to run up at the wall and he's going to go into a very specific angle and he's going to jump oh, through the door. Oh, and that skips having to press those buttons to save Shaggy and get Shaggy out of the tank. So slow. And then essentially he has some more acid here. So essentially what he's going to do is he's going to jump on a platform and then he's going to jump all the way to the other side Ready? of the Ready? room. And then you're going to see him after a couple of cups he's going to skip them just by pressing A. And then essentially he's going to clip through the wall here. Um, and essentially this is just to get to the mastermind fight faster. Now he's here, now he's gonna yeah, it skips like the first phase. Yeah. Kill all the enemies here so that the electricity dies around those buttons so we can uh, keep hitting them and like uh, advance the fight further. Yeah, so we we actually skip having to activate the boss music here, so we're just going with the normal main theme of the game instead of made for boss music that you barely ever do in speedruns unless you ac accidentally activate it. You can accidentally go in the corner and trigger the cutscene and you'll lose like 5, 10 ish seconds. It's great. But you get to hear some really nice music. Alright, so Titan is coming up soon, so what I need to do is ground pound the boss to stun him, and then I repeatedly helmet dash him into the electricity, and time ends when he collides with the lightning in the back. So we're waiting for him to spawn. He can spawn in a bunch of different places. And of course I get one hit. That's actually absurd. No. Alright, get ready on time. And time. Wow! Okay. That is. <laughs> I amazing. on my end I have a 25-17. That is absurd. That, that is amazing. That's only 25 off my TV. For a marathon. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's absurd. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's it. That's Scooby-Doo out of 100 Frights, everyone. Um, that was beyond ridiculously good for a marathon game. There he is. Thank you so much to Calithon for having us. Uh, this was a lot of fun to do. Now it's time to get to the bottom uh, Big shout outs to everyone on Come the mic with me for making this a whole bunch of fun. Really is. Uh, <laughs> Wait, Fred. Yeah, like, so I I uh, now we get to see who the really is. culprit behind the Scooby-Doo mystery that we ended right? up skipping was. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, right. it wasn't Don Nuts, uh, the groundskeeper. Uh, there's, there's a, for some reason, a star-studded cast on this uh, what do you people game's have uh, <laughs> voice cast. So we got Don Nuts, the groundskeeper, <laughs> with absolutely no neck, and Tim Curry as the mastermind, the believe it or not. But no, Incredibly it's always epic. gotta be the groundskeeper. Um, before I go into Shadow so, uh Anytime anything uh, you three want to say before I go into well words? So please play this game casually to listen to Don Knotts' lines. Like, it's not just this cutscene, he will say lines in the levels as well, they're great. We have a lot of entire Discord speedrun community that you can join if you're interested in speedrun in this game. You can keep the, like, the state tutorials as close to people in the Discord button to help you if you want to try and speedrun this game. It's very accessible, I would say. Oh, me? Yeah, and essentially, if you want to just see more of this game, in Uncle general, Alexander, a lot of it's I don't believe so if you just it. Hit the Night of 100 Parts category. I knew it all the time. Something just doesn't add up. This game has also been like extremely active recently. Yeah. With this, I think um, nine out of the top ten runners have PB'd in the past like two months. Wow. So th this game has been just popping off. Yeah. And it's super Holy, easy to get into, super accessible. There? Um. 
I want to especially shout out my boy Harsh, who is not only just an amazing human being, he also made a really excellent tutorial for the no GGS category, which is sort of the beginner route that doesn't do that really hard skip in the giant fan room that you saw me do with all those slope jumps. Um, so if you're worried about some of the stuff I did, I was like, oh, that looks way too hard. Don't worry about it. There's, there's a lot of ways to route things out, and there's a lot of flexibility, and it's really, really easy to get into. And I noticed how she passed through that rail near the secret lab. It's pretty easy. By setting up a hologram of herself when the mastermind was around, she'd have the perfect Alibi. So it really rewards, but what like, I don't get right is how she got the yeah. professor and you're, here. And if you're not in a mastermind costume, no less. <laughs> yeah, if you're not well, interested simple. in any percent, she used my patent pending, dressed for supper, sucked you well. up. I spent like, so much time like this game is more than an episode. 100% yeah. and to the front door in seconds. Uh, before <laughs> we get into the greatest credits bop of all time, uh, the, which hopefully uh, we don't get uh, kicked out exactly. before then, um, really? I'd like to shout out a couple more people. Um, Holly, big shout out to Baz. To uh, Baz is like one of the godfathers of this uncle. game and is kind of responsible for getting us all together on this. So huge shout out to my boy Baz. Again, shout outs to Harsh. Shout outs to everyone in the Scooby community in general. You all are just the greatest um, and your great <laughs> and I appreciate it. Um, oh, so yeah why, go ahead Sam. Holly? why go through no, all of this it's, it's just really you guys amazing how like, this uncle. game went and when he was sent to jail active, I'd like, steal his super two years ago to 2020 claim I came up with it myself. yeah so I would have made a fortune right, there's too. been three new words in the mm, past 24 hours. It was a good plan. Yeah, literally in the past, yeah. Yeah, and I and two sub 25s, which is like a huge Not milestone for our community. Kids so and your pesky yeah, dog. so. I get unless any. Uh, I guess I should probably yeah, preface sir, this. Let me help so you. for whatever reason, this oh, game has the greatest credits bop of all paid. time. I like to jokingly call it Scoob Step well, and listen to it whenever I finish start. a run. So if it's cool hey. with the marathon stuff, I know we're a little bit ahead, but if you need to cut me off, that's totally fine. Um, I like uh, to take a moment uh, to listen to the credits music for a bit. It's about like a minute or two. Minutes, so everyone in chat, get your dance emotes, whatever you have ready, because this is just quality content. Right here. And here we go. Out chat? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> We're good? Okay, great. Alright, I'm gonna be quiet and just sit back and relax. Can we get a uh, shout out to the lead tester, Eric? Eric Hernandez and all the other testers, poor thing. Shout out to my boy Razmik the Bug Killer, who had the audacity to nickname himself the Bug Killer in the comment in, in the credits, but you can beat the game in probably under 20 minutes once we go like creepy early, so. Oops. <laughs> Easy ball a shot call is also good. <laughs> Did you ever notice? <laughs> Dude, no, I was, I was, right, right always knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, you also got Butt Boy on guitar, which is also good. Cool. That's Butt Boy. Come on. That's Butt Boy. <laughs> That's Butt Boy. He made some pretty cool tunes for this game. And you don't hear any of them in this <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we skipped all of them. <laughs> Rasmic yet, or is that in the next verse? Oh, no, um, we, we've gone past him. Ah, <laughs> yeah, thank you all, by the way, and thank you again to Califon. Yeah, see, there's Tim Curry. I wasn't lying to you, he is credited in this game. Oh, um, yeah, so like everyone, everyone you knew from those like cool 90s movie movies that he just hired all those voice actors to do all the voices again. Yeah, it's actually pretty sick. And yeah, like we said, please play this game casually. This game is actually made by the same people who made Battle for Bikini Bottom and like the movie game. Uh, this this was their project before they did that. So if if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. 
Um, but yeah, we've come to the end of the scoop step, unfortunately. I hope you I hope you enjoyed the Velma bass drop. Um, that's about all the time we've got. Um, I believe coming up next we have uh, Lori back on the on stage with Pac Man World 2. Um, so at this point, we're going to toss it back over to the Calathon staff. Again, thank you so much, everyone, for having us as a part of this. It was really a great opportunity to get to show this game off. So uh, I've been Jaxler. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, enjoy the rest of the marathon and keep donating, everybody. Take it easy.